Have you heard of the Magyar people or their nation of Magyarzag? It's Hungary, the exotic Central European nation whose beautiful capital of Budapest will surprise you with its affordable luxury and unique history. Gypsy music fills the air. Scenic vistas are everywhere. Old and new mix in a cultural blend that makes Budapest an excellent destination to put high on your travel list. The city on the Danube is a little different from the other great capitals of Europe in a pleasant old-fashioned way that fills it with authentic charms. It's a little bit less polished, it's a little bit more run down and yet they have made tremendous strides in fixing up this city. And it's a little bit less crowded and less discovered than those other famous European capitals. 2,000 years of invasion, liberation, reoccupation, devastation and rebirth played out over and over again in a cycle of history that somehow produced this unique culture. A lack of money has prevented that squeaky clean modernization machine from rolling through town the way it has recently glitzed up so many other cities on the continent. As a result, some of the buildings are a little run down, plaster is peeling here and there, although it's been fixed up dramatically. The roads have been repaved and they're no longer bumpy. And it's a beautiful reward for the intrepid traveler. You'll get a genuine city that's filled with real character. A wide variety of architectural styles are on display. They call it the Hungarian Eclectic. It blends the elements of classical and Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque, and Art Nouveau and modern, sometimes all in a single building. Ancient invasion by Huns in the fifth century, and then Magyars from the Urals, followed by the Mongols 800 years ago, then Muslims 500 years back, have all left their stamp on the culture. Budapest consists of the formerly separate communities of Buda, on the western bank of the Danube, up on the hill. Buda contains the former royal palace and the old castle district. And Pest, on the east, the flatter, more modern side of town. Pest stands on a level plain and is the site of the main shopping areas, the Museum of Fine Arts, the Palace of Justice, Parliament, and the National Museum. No other city along Europe's longest river embraces it as much as Budapest does, with nine bridges linking the two sides and a major promenade along the river offering sweeping views to the pedestrian. As usual in our series, we'll explain in detail how to get the most out of your time in a carefully planned itinerary that suggests exactly what to do each moment of the day with some time left over for your own pursuits. It takes at least three days to fully explore the many sites on offer in this great city. Vorsmarty Square is right in the heart of the city, so begin your visit on day one at Vorsmarty Square, surrounded by cafes, shops, and lovely pedestrian lanes extending in every direction. The large statue in the center of this pleasant tree-lined plaza depicts the poet Mihaly Vorosmarty, who became a national hero with his patriotic writings in the mid-19th century when Hungary unsuccessfully attempted to gain independence from Austria. It says something really positive about the nation's character that it has a poet sitting in the capital's center as a hero surrounded by these two levels of marble benches that draw people to him for comfort and relaxation. He symbolizes that universal human spirit yearning to be free. This makes a great people watching perch that you might want to come back to several times later for you'll certainly pass through this central square repeatedly in your visit to Budapest. Hungary's most famous cafe, Gerbau, is on the north side of the square 
and you'll notice there's a metro stop right in front of the Terrace Cafe, so it couldn't be more convenient. Perhaps the most beautiful vista in town is the view from the banks of the Danube River, just two short blocks from Vores Marty Square. Several of the city's top five-star hotels are located right here along the river, making this neighborhood an ideal place to stay. The Four Seasons Hotel Gresham Palace has opened up and has become the superstar five-star deluxe hotel of the city. It took them many years to totally rebuild and reconstruct this building into the deluxe glamorous five-star hotel that we see today. Glass, cupola, ceiling, and dome highlight this glorious lobby and the Intercontinental Hotel. And then there is the Meridian, a fabulous hotel, also centrally located, a five-star, deluxe, wonderful place to stay. Of course, there are many smaller, less expensive hotels scattered throughout the town. A fine example is the four-star Astoria Hotel, located in one of the busy crossroads of the city. Undoubtedly, the main pedestrian street in the heart of Budapest is the Vasiutka, which leads out from Voros Marty Square's south end. This lively promenade is lined with shops and cafes and it's filled with people all day and well into the evening. It's a very safe and enjoyable and entertaining place to walk. It extends about one mile to the Central Market Hall, which is a huge indoor food emporium. So you can walk along Vasiutka in the morning before all the shops open and continue on down to the food market. Well, the Central Market Hall is one of the few places in town that awakens early. So it's a fine place to explore at the beginning of the day. It closes by about 5 p.m. on most days, so you could visit in the afternoon if your schedule required. Uh, the Central Market is one of those special places that you will really enjoy, even if you don't buy anything, because it is full of history, color, and life. The hall is huge, covering an area of about two football fields, and it's very old. It first opened in 1896, built in that early modern style of steel and glass, with a very high ceiling and closing the vast space. It's filled with food stalls of all kinds and a lot of clothing and souvenir and fabric shops as well. You'll notice lots of chili peppers hanging everywhere, an essential ingredient in Hungarian cuisine, which is generally used in a mild form of paprika that doesn't burn your mouth, but adds some very rich flavors. The real delight here is watching the locals shopping for their fresh produce. And you might pick up some fruits for healthy snacking later. There are a couple of food counters upstairs and Bacchanal restaurant where you can have an inexpensive meal. And you'll find souvenir shops scattered amidst the food stalls, especially on the upper level. You can do a little bit of bargaining here for the goods but don't expect any great drop in prices because after all, the posted prices are quite reasonable. You might consider a large tablecloth. That's a very popular item. There's small colorful dolls outfitted in traditional costumes. You could pick up a carved wooden chess set and all sorts of souvenirs and doodads that mark your visit to Budapest. Downstairs in the basement of the Central Market Hall is yet another level. And here you'll find some fish vendors with some live fish in their aquatic tanks. And also there's a sizable supermarket down here in the basement. Kind of surprising to see a, a normal traditional supermarket in the midst of these very specialized food halls on the main level. The Central Market was thoroughly refurbished just over 10 years ago, and so it's in very good condition. 
There's escalators that will take you to the upper levels or staircases. There's restrooms. There's everything you could need to spend several hours of high enjoyment. Well, let's see that. Very nice. A uh, couple bucks each. Mother. Yes. Now, when you've finished with the food market, come on out through the elaborate front doors, which resemble the portal of a major church, and then take a right turn and walk along the busy ring road for about three blocks. And there you will find the National Museum that can provide for you a big dose of Hungarian history. Radeutka is one of the trendier streets just a block away from the History Museum. It's a lovely spot because it's a pedestrian lane lined with cafes, restaurants, boutiques, and some little hotels. This is a very upscale and up-and-coming part of town. It's sort of a, a trendy artistic district where the yuppies hang out, enjoy an afternoon, do a little shopping, sit at a cafe and have a drink, or eat at a restaurant. There are a half a dozen very fine restaurants here along Radayutka. It's in the fashionable 9th district, a very pleasant street that's just bursting with trendy boutiques and cutting edge art galleries as well. And there's a bus that comes right down the road, but no cars allowed regularly during the day. It's converted to a pedestrian mall. It's a great creative use of what had formerly just been another city street. It's located right at Calvin Terra, which is a big busy intersection. Underneath there's a major metro station. And here you've got a variety of shops and little cafes and fast food joints. They've really made the most of their subterranean spaces at these metro stations in Budapest. And a block away is a fine hotel in the Accor chain. It's a Mercure Hotel, a very modern facility. They've got fine rooms and it's a good location. It's not in the heart of the old touristic part of town, but you can see here it's very much centrally located in downtown. The small neighborhood of the inner city only goes for about one half mile in each direction, making it very easy to see by just strolling along several nice streets. The buildings here date mostly from the late 19th and early 20th centuries. So this neighborhood is not a classic old town with narrow cobbled streets and ancient buildings, which you will find later up on the Buddha Hill next to the castle across the river. Instead, this is a typical downtown with some fascinating buildings scattered here and there. Continue west a couple blocks along Kossuth Lajos, the busiest street of the city, to the Franciscan Church. It was built in the mid 18th century Hungarian Baroque style with a lot of Italian influences. And the quiet interior is a welcome relief. As you exit the Franciscan Church, turn left on Caroli, passing the University Library. Notice its small, brightly colored dome. The noisy street widens here to form Forensic Terry, the action center of the inner city. At the end of the block, you'll see another Baroque gem, the University Church, finished in 1748 with a style strongly influenced by that Italian genius Borromini, borrowing his use of convex and concave surfaces on the facade. The interior well, is a bit dark, city, but, but hey, it's free, it's open to the public, so by all means, step on inside, and there you can further appreciate the Baroque details of this wonderful old church. If you'd like a bit of greenery, have a look at the precious little park that's next to the church, across the street, behind the Museum of Literature. This, you'll see, is quite the neighborhood gathering spot. You'll find the people sitting on the comfortable benches. You'll find lots of kids with their moms the kids are having a grand time in this playground. 
There's beautiful, colorful flowers, a vast green lawn, lovely paths through it all. And it's somewhat surrounded by a bit of a mini forest. You've got some lovely trees, and there are several really quite lovely gates that lead into this park space. This is a great example of an urban neighborhood park in a place that doesn't have that many other parks nearby. So it really does become a focal point for the residents of this neighborhood. Well, it makes sense to finish the day with a return over to Vasiutka, which is just two blocks over. And you could spend the rest of your late afternoon browsing in the shops and galleries along this lively street filled with interesting people. The main pedestrian zone extends out from Vasi Utka on several cross streets that have more shops and interesting buildings to glance at as you stroll along. Especially noteworthy is the Parisi Udvar Arcade. This is quite a complex. It had fallen on some hard times. It was really black from decades of pollution, but they have done a lot of work here to reconstruct and rebuild and clean it up and restore it to some of its original grandeur. Well, that wraps up the activities for day one. That would keep you busy. And you can spend the evening having a lovely meal in one of those fine Budapest restaurants with the live gypsy music. You might consider Rescacas or Sesavis Eterem. They both have outstanding Hungarian cuisine and feature live gypsy music. <laughs> <laughs>